Hello, today we're going to watch some creepy Japanese commercials. This video consists of three parts, so if you don't like one of them for some reason, you can always just skip to the next one. And there's a small poll at the end, so don't miss it. Well, let's start with this humanoid golden retriever, who is probably personally familiar with all the horrors of nuclear war, because I can't imagine how something like this could have appeared without the participation of a peaceful atom. In general, this commercial consists of several separate episodes dedicated to various sad moments from the lives of ordinary Japanese teenagers. In the first part, we are shown a sad boy coming home from school where someone obviously broke his heart. And so he would have gone on about his business if a huge mutant dog hadn't suddenly approached him wanting to find out what had happened in his life. Having guessed the boy's problem, the retriever tries to cheer him up somehow, but all these attempts turn out to be in vain. And for some reason, I'm not surprised. Nevertheless, his problem is eventually solved and everyone becomes happy again. Except for the dog, who is now left alone with his radiation-twisted soul. However, he's not sad for very long, because once he tries these potato chips, his mood immediately improves. And at first glance, I thought it was the commercial for some kind of Japanese dog food. But no, these are exactly treats for children. In general, it's better not to feed them to dogs, or you will get something like this. I think some of you might have a completely different interpretation of this episode and the entire commercial, and this text that appears here and there could shed some light on its true plot, but personally I have never managed to translate it properly. It's actually quite difficult to recognize it, different translators come up with different strange phrases like side parting or 23 divisions, though there is probably some sense in this after all. And some kanji I didn't even dare to draw, I can't imagine how Japanese school children remember them. All other commercials, except for the dance special, and maybe even one lost episode, follow roughly the same script. Some kid is having a bad day, the golden retriever notices it and tries to cheer him up, and in the end they eat chips. In between the fun and the chips, all sorts of weird things usually happen such as creepy parodies, abductions, and even aliens. Basically, all the episodes of the commercials seem more fun and creative than creepy, and to understand what's wrong with them, let's look at some things a little differently through the eyes of other people. First of all, it's literally the golden retriever himself, if that even needs to be explained. The way this dog changes his personalities, how he behaves with children and how they react to his presence, if it's not creepy, then it certainly doesn't look like something normal. In any case, the cherry on the cake is the third episode in which the most ordinary dog appears. In some shots, it's perfectly normal, but in others, it turns into a scarecrow, ending its life in a battle for a baseball and being impaled on a long wooden stick. This episode is considered creepy not because of its visual content, but rather because of the context behind it. It is widely believed that it shows the sunset of the life of the real dog, which goes through the taxidermy procedure, allegedly necessary for filming some moments of the commercial. These rumors can only be surpassed by the even more popular story that the mutant dog costume itself is made up of parts of a real retriever or even several at once, which had to sacrifice their fur and skin, and someone even its entire head. The actor literally walks in a costume made of real dogs, and allegedly, you can even see it if you look closely enough at some moments of the commercial. And just when it seems that nothing more insane can be thought of here, a third legend pops up according to which the evil spirit of the retriever possessed the actor, who eventually became forced to walk in a costume made of its skin and fur, and behave like a real dog but forever, for the rest of his life. It's hard to say where these rumors came from. It is almost as difficult to establish where and when this commercial appeared at all. There is no exact information about it, as well as there is no details about the actors who starred in it or what they are doing now. Sounds mysterious, right? Well, it's not. I am more than sure that there is nothing strange behind this nuclear chips lover, except for himself, of course. Two factors could have influenced this story, the rather low quality of the commercial and the props used in it, as well as its wide distribution and popularity in short videos. Have you ever noticed how easily the internet can control people's thoughts and even actions? And sometimes this influence happens in a good way, but often it's the other way around. In the comments under each video about the Calbee dog, you can find dozens of people who so fiercely argue that the costume was made of real dogs, as if their own lives would fall apart if it wasn't true. As sources of their information, they usually cite complete silence, but sometimes it's even some reliable facts from the trustmebro.com. Thus, they are just retelling something they heard or read somewhere, without even bothering to look at the situation and ask themselves, what are they trying to make me believe? Can I trust this? Despite the complete absence of any, even the most ghostly evidence, some some people are ready to make a costume out of you with their own hands if you don't share their opinion, which was put into their heads by strangers from the internet. 
and this case is just one of hundreds or even thousands, definitely not the most telling. Personally, I find this commercial very funny and even quite cute, especially if you close your eyes to some of the flaws, but its most important advantage for me was the opportunity to at least superficially look at the influence of the internet and how it can turn even the most harmless and obvious things upside down, turning perfectly normal and sensible people into spreaders of someone else's opinion, which they take as absolute truth. There's a lot more to think about here, but let's move on to the next commercial. I think we can all agree that food is something that no one on earth can do without, and depending on the context it can be either something very desirable and anticipated, or something that you would prefer to skip. For some reason, I have a feeling that our next commercial is exploring this very idea. And you know what? Maybe you should take a look at it yourself first. So, what can I say? Well, first of all, this is the commercial for pasta sauce, not a new art house horror movie. Although this didn't stop some especially creative people. Secondly, the red comrades symbolize not the imminent onset of communism, but code raw, which is the flavor of this sauce. It is very possible that right now you have the same facial expression as this girl. And despite the fact that this commercial is considered a bit strange even in Japan, it's actually pretty easy to explain. So, let's start with the history of these creatures. And they first appeared somewhere in the early 20th century, as extremely popular in Europe, porcelain figurines of baby cupids called Cupi, which were produced in the German Empire almost until the start of World War I. These babies became a cultural phenomenon and very soon were presented almost all over the world, including Japan, where they, for some reason, began to be massively used without a production license. Besides the fact that the sauce manufacturer is literally called Cupi, you don't have to be Sherlock to find another clue right on its logo. And if you also have a vivid imagination, imagination and for some reason try to cross a Cupid doll with cod row in your head, then this is exactly what you'll get. Now that we've got the characters out of the way, and your face is starting to look a little less like the girls from the first episode, let's take a look at the second, and I think one of the most important element of this commercial, the musical accompaniment. The song here is really cool and catchy. For several nights in a row it was quite difficult for me to fall asleep, because it literally kept spinning in my head over and over again. It is also worth mentioning here that QP were looking for some really talented performers to record this song, and in 2006 they found them in a duo of two girls called Kigurumi. Our red comrades appear here too, but they still behave quite adequately. And if you're watching this video in the winter, then you may be pleased with the New Year's version of the song, recorded by the same duo. There are a whole bunch of episodes of this commercial featuring Tarako dolls in a variety of colors, shapes, and especially situations from the Victorian era to a full-scale alien invasion threatening human civilization. In general, there's not enough time to look at everything, so if you're interested you can find the rest on YouTube, it's quite fun actually. Tarako dolls have somewhat replicated the success of their distant porcelain predecessors and have become so popular that their image can be found on mugs, plates, t-shirts, bags, and just about anywhere they can be painted or their shape replicated. The cool catchy song and creative commercial have done an incredible job again, and if I were in Japan and needed pasta sauce, I would definitely choose Kupi Terako, at least because of these slightly creepy, but at the same time very cute little dolls. That's how easily I get influenced by marketers. By the way, Kupi has a lot of commercials in a similar crazy style, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see more reviews. And now we are smoothly moving on to the third and final part for today. And if you thought that our army of marching red comrades was something unusual, then you just haven't seen this masterpiece of Japanese marketing yet. The first episode starts quite normally. Some woman decides to have lunch and pulls out a package of instant noodles right from her noodle cupboard. Have you noticed how many weird things in Japan are somehow related to noodles? There's definitely something strange about that. Anyway, just as she's finally about to start eating, who do you think suddenly appears in the window opposite? Batman? No, thankfully it's just Cheese Man. In short, he's come to share his cheesy flesh with the woman, as crazy as that sounds. She politely declines his offer at first, but it turned out to be very hard to resist a piece of alien flesh, so she eventually agrees to try the new taste of the third millennium. And yeah, it seems pretty tasty, so everything ends quite well here. Probably. By the way, there's also a whole post credit scene in this episode, which shows how the husband of that woman returns to the noodle lover's house. He also sits down to eat, but his food already contains a new secret ingredient that now lives in their fridge. And there is something to think about. 
a whole cupboard just breaking from instant noodles, a woman sitting motionless in the middle of the room until lunchtime, a completely empty fridge with no food at all. All this makes you wonder what's wrong with this family and who's really in trouble here. And the answer to this question can be found in the next episode of the commercial, which shows that Cheese Man is now a permanent resident of this house and is forced to share his flesh forever in order to feed both the woman and her husband with delicious noodles. There is also a new character appears here and in a rather creepy way, occasionally peeking out from around the corner. And yes, it's mozzarella cheese. Although the woman was again a little confused at first, she quickly took the situation into her own hands and now already two aliens are forced to live in her fridge. As the commercial budget grew, it featured new, completely non-Japanese locations. But what's even more interesting, new aliens. In one of the episodes, we are shown Cheeseman again, who may have escaped straight from the fridge and who is now helped by none other than Pepperman. For some reason, I got the feeling that the flesh of the aliens had some sort of special effect on people, disabling the parts of their brain responsible for fear. But maybe I'm just imagining things. Or maybe not. And how can I not mention the episode with Garlic Man, which is the craziest one, who parodies the screamers from the early noughties? It's really creative and unusual. Oh, and the company that owns these noodles has a lot more of other commercials in this crazy style, so be sure to subscribe if you're interested. And it doesn't have to be only Japanese commercials. Other countries are also full of such things, so there's really a lot to see. Well, that's all for today. Honestly, I really like the QP Tarako commercial for some reason. There is something so catchy about it, right? It would be very interesting to know your thoughts on which commercial seemed the craziest to you, so be sure to take the poll that just popped up on your screen or leave a comment. That would be even better. Good luck, and I really hope to see you again.